I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist and you're watching Real Paleontology. And I've got some exciting news for all you paleontology enthusiasts out there. The news just in is that the world's first sabre tooth has just been discovered on Mallorca Island off the coast of Spain. What a pretty place to go get yourself discovered in. And this is the paper in which this find is reported. It's a free download for anyone who wants to chase it up. Now, I'm going to keep this short because I've got presents to wrap, but this new discovery is just too damn exciting to go unreported. Firstly, because, hey, it's a sabre tooth. And secondly, because it appears to be the oldest representative of a particular lineage that ultimately gave rise to we furry mammals. Anyway, here it is. Or at least, this is what the fossilised bones of this new sabre tooth look like when they were first discovered. And this is how the bones would have been arranged in the living animal. And here is an artist's reconstruction. Now, this beast doesn't actually have a name yet, so I'm just going to call it the Moloccan Gorgonopsian. So we don't have a name, but what we do know for sure is that it's a Gorgonopsian, and Gorgonopsians include awesome beasts like Inna Strangvincia here, which featured in an earlier episode of my Super Predator series. If you want more info on these, this would be a good place to start. So, this Malorcan Gorgonopsian certainly wasn't the biggest of its kind. It was around the size of a large dog. And it didn't have the biggest sabre teeth either, but over 270 million years old, it is definitely the oldest. And the other exciting thing is that this probably makes it the oldest known therapsid. So, what's so exciting about that, you might reasonably ask? Well, basically, therapsids are us. And to give a bit of context here, the therapsid lineage, which includes us, is an early breakaway from a still broader group, the synapsids. And at this level, we are drilling down into a deep fundamental split between the lineage that led to wee mammals and the one that led to reptiles and birds, which of course also includes non-avian dinosaurs and pterosaurs, etc., etc. Now, the thing that separates synapsids from diapsids is basically the number of holes in their skull. Synapsids have one hole, excluding their eye socket, of course, and diapsids have two. Now, before the age of dinosaurs, way back there in the Permian, synapsids ruled the terrestrial world, right up until the Great End Permian extinction event around 252 million years ago, ruined pretty much everyone's day. And of course, from the ruins of this biological catastrophe, it was the diapsids who rose from the ashes to reign supreme with mostly non-avian dinosaurs ruling the land and pterosaurs ruling the skies, we synapsids were restricted to bit player roles through this, the age of reptiles. But of course, we got the last laugh. When the big rock hit 65 million years ago, it was we synapsids who rose again to take our rightful place on the world domination scene. One last thing makes the discovery of this Moloccan Gorgonopsian both exciting and intriguing. From this discovery, we can deduce that therapsids must have been around for tens of millions of years earlier than we thought. A ghost lineage that has left no fossil evidence to date. Hopefully, we'll find some of these ghosts in the not too far distant future. And I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this little Christmas Eve special. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Have a Merry Christmas.